kingdom in that good news. In that good news. Jesus, sing that good news, good news. I got a in that kingdom, in that good news. I got a in that kingdom, in that good news. I got a in that kingdom, in that good news. I got a in that kingdom, in that good news. I got a in that kingdom, in that good news. I got a in that kingdom, in that good news. I got a in that kingdom, in that good news. Shoulder off of my cross, gonna take it home with you, my Jesus, in that good news. Good news, good news, good news, it's my life. I ain't that good news, good news, I want to get to the end. You know, they sort of, of course, align with, with my text, and, um, and it's good to, to have some repetition because uh, that's how the Lord designs it all. Yeah. So I appreciate uh, much of what was said there. All of what was said, of course, but some of which uh, I had studied in my uh, in my text. So, with that being said, I'd like to uh, just read the Hebrews uh, chapter nine, the text that uh, that I've been given, and just in reference to a few of the verses that bring it into context. Uh, chapter uh, nine, beginning with uh, verse twenty-four. We'll just begin there. Christ is not entered into the holy place made with hands which are the figures of the true, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. Nor yet that he should offer himself often, as the high priest entereth into the holy place every year with blood of others. For then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world. But now, once in the end of the world, you like that? But now, yes. once Amen. in the end of the world, that Amen. was 2,000 years ago. Amen. Amen hath he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. And he did put away sin. Yes, amen. amen. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment, so Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many. Mm -hmm. And unto them that look for him yes. shall he appear the second time without sin. Mm -hmm. Without sin unto salvation. Amen. Amen. What a text, I'll tell you. Yes. I love the book of Hebrews. Amen. Just a, a passing comment. It was many, many, many years ago. And Brother Al Stoner uh, shared uh, uh, the Hebrews uh, letter uh, with me, and certainly, and I'm referring to uh, some some texts that he had offered. And I studied and studied and studied. And it's been one of my favorite books over all these years. So um, Hebrews 9:27. Boy, what a text this is. And it says, "As it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment." You know, we've been talking since yesterday and this morning about this uh, term appointed, and I just wanted to lay this down, that uh, the, the Greek, as you well know, this is the Greek uh, rendering, uh, this apokimahi, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's somewhat pronounced in the Greek, means to be laid up, to be reserved. And we're going to find in some of the texts that I'm going to read here that that terminology of using reserved mm -hmm. or laid up, or in store, uh, or awaiting, that they all apply. Mm -hmm. When it mm -hmm. comes to the appointment of God, it's a decree of God. Yes, God amen. God decreed, and therefore it shall come to pass. That's amen. right. There's no, no turning back. This is a decree from the Lord, mm -hmm. God himself. So what does he say here? As it is appointed unto men once to die. That means all mankind. Amen. We're included, brethren. Yes. We live in this flesh and blood, this vessel of clay, and it is appointed unto men, unto us, unto all mankind, that we will put off this mortal body. Yes, that will amen. That inevitably amen. happen. Death is inevitable for mankind. Yes. It's inescapable. Mm -hmm. It's inescapable. Mm -hmm. Psalm 89, 48 says, but it, it has this question. What man is he that liveth and shall not see death? Hmm. Yeah. What a question that is. Yes. What man is he that liveth and shall not see death? Shall he deliver his soul from the hand of the grave? Hmm. That's a rhetorical question. Yeah. He can't. He can't. Death is inevitable. It is appointed. That's why. Yeah. Ecclesiastes 3.20 says, 
all go unto one place. All are of the dust, mm -hmm. and all turn to dust again. A threefold all. all everyone's included. No one, no one is excluded. It's yes. All. Amen. All Amen. Will die. All That's right. Now, lest we uh, get off track here, I just want to make mention of two people that you well know. My brother know this because you're, you're, you're uh, uh, students of the Word of God. Mm -hmm. There were two people back in the old days. Mm -hmm. Enoch, who walked with God mm -hmm. and was not. Mm -hmm. He didn't see death. That's right. And then, of course, we have Elijah. Yes. And in 2 Kings chapter 2, it says Elijah was <clears throat> taken up in that chariot with uh, horses of fire. Those two men did not see death. My point there in bringing that out mm -hmm. is that God who is sovereign, mm -hmm. can do whatsoever he will. Amen. Amen. Though this is a decree of God, see, God oftentimes, and you'll find this in other subjects of Scripture, mm -hmm. God will often make a decree or make a statement, and yet he has an exception that he can make. Yes. Yes. Why does he do that? It proves he's sovereign. So Amen. He proves he That's knows right. the end from the beginning, and the purpose of God Amen. is at hand. That's right. why. Mm -hmm. So those two were the exceptions. But as for the rest of mankind, mm -hmm. if I can throw a number, 99.999% of <laughs> yeah, mankind, yeah. we have an appointment that's set by God to go by the way of death. Yes. By the goal, by way mm -hmm. of death, we shall all die. It is reserved for us. It's laid up and awaiting us. We have no uh, choice in that matter. Uh -huh. Why is that? Romans 5.12 says, it reminds us that the whole human race mm -hmm. is destined to go the way of death. Mm -hmm. Why? Due to sin. That's right. Out by a brother here earlier, mm -hmm. the fall of Adam. The fall of Adam saw to that. That's yep. why all men die. It says in verse 12 of that chapter, as by one man, meaning Adam, mm -hmm. first Adam, sin entered into the world and death by sin. And so death passed upon all men for that all have sinned. Ezekiel 18, verse 4 says, The soul that sinneth, it shall die. Mm -hmm. See, that's a law of God. See, mm -hmm. that's a decree of God. The soul that sinneth, it yes. shall die. Well, yeah. we are all sold under sin, right? Yeah. We are uh -huh. all uh, doomed in that regard. Mm -hmm. So the world today, right now, is doomed or destined to this way of death, and they are destined because it's an appointment from God. Amen. God. Mm -hmm. It's reserved for them, mm -hmm. for all mankind. James 1.15 reminds us here, When lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Amen. Mm -hmm. So, amen. that's a scripture yes, amen. that lays that point down very clearly. And then Job chapter 30, 23, For I know that thou wilt bring me to death, uh -huh. And to the house appointed for all living, death awaits us. Mm -hmm. We have no choice in the matter. Mm -hmm. Amen. It awaits us, brethren. Amen. It is appointed. Well, lest we get despaired, uh, be in despair or despondent regarding this appointment, this decree of God, the text here does say, but after this, the judgment. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to cover that right at this moment. I want you to... Take comfort in these words. <clears throat> that death he's talking about there, just like Adam and Eve in the garden. There was a twofold death there, right? Mm -hmm. When you yeah. think about it, they physically, yeah. physically died. Adam lived to be about 930 some years old. Yeah. But by the grace of God, God clothed them. Yeah. He uh -huh. clothed Adam and Eve right uh -huh. after their sin. Well, the other part of that death is the spiritual death, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. And lest they, they eat, that's what Genesis says, yeah, lest right. they eat or partake of that tree of life, yeah. he banned them out of that garden. Yes, amen. So that was a twofold death there. Mm -hmm. amen. Well, for us, even today, for all mankind, there's two aspects of death. It's mm -hmm. that physical death that we all hear. Yeah. Brethren, brothers, sisters, mm -hmm. children, Young men, old, rich, poor, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter the condition or the state of, of mankind. Uh -huh. They'll see death. Yep. It's appointed. Mm -hmm. They'll see death. However, it's the spiritual death we need to be concerned about. Yes. Are we alive in Christ? Do we have eternal life because we've confessed and made that profession of faith? Or 
are we going to die in our trespasses and sins? Mm -hmm. Well, for all of you, brethren, that I trust all that are here present and all God's people, the church of God, they have eternal life. Amen. Because they've made a profession Amen. of faith Amen. in Amen. Christ Jesus, and they are under, as Brother Dick said, under the blood, under the blood. And therefore, brethren, we're going to escape, if you will, that eternal damnation. Mm -hmm. We'll see about that here in a minute. So, we have that physical death, and we have the, uh, the uh, uh, physical death and the spiritual death. I want to touch on this subject here, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, where it uh, really has a lot, this entire chapter, I'm not going to read it all, of course, but, you know, the apostle here is, is making reference to uh, the body, this body. He refers to, I'm just going to throw these terms out. Uh, he talks about the spiritual body. It is sown a spirit, a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. Yep. Then later on, he makes reference to this corruptible. This corruptible must put on incorruption, yep. and this mortal must put on immortality. Mm -hmm. See, that's this flesh and blood that we are currently abiding in. Mm -hmm. That's this body that we have. Mm -hmm. Well, in the new life, of course, that's going to be trans formed into, of course, the glorious body and the immortality that he speaks of here. So now I'm going to read this. Here's the victory. Here's, here's the comfort uh, regarding this text. It says, death is swallowed up in victory. Amen. In victory. This is through Christ. O Amen. death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So, brethren, this is the great victory. This is the great comfort. Yes. Amen. We have eternal life with Christ. We, though we'll die, though our, our body will be laid in that grave, and, and I just can't help but Many of you, brethren, know Brother Kenny Smith, the most mm -hmm. recent dear brother in the Lord who passed away. Well, his body is in the grave. But brethren, his soul, his life, his eternal life yes. is with Jesus. Amen. Amen. Right now. Amen. That's a glorious thing. Amen. Though death came upon him, that was inevitable. That was uh -huh. inescapable. And he passed from this life unto the next. Mm -hmm. What a glorious thing that is. Yeah. Thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory in Christ Jesus. What else can we say regarding this? Our sins are covered by the blood of Christ. We're justified by faith in His blood. Yes. Romans 4, 7, and 8 says, Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Amen. Blessed Amen. is the man to whom the Lord will not, not impute enough. sin. Mm -hmm. See, blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven. Not cursed. Yeah. Blessed. Amen. Blessed. Amen. So, we praise God and we praise Praise the Lord Jesus Christ for this truth. Amen. Jesus took the curse that we might be blessed. Amen. Amen. Brethren, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Mm -hmm. When we think of death, right? And this has just recently been brought out in the last 20, 30 minutes. You think about death, and, and it's a fearful thing. Now, to the world, of course, it's very fearful. Mm -hmm. To the saints... We sometimes, in our flesh and in our thoughts, we somehow think, wow, when will I pass away? How will I pass away? What, what is that like, crossing that river? It, it, it's something we haven't right, experienced yet. But I'll tell you, we can take comfort in the scriptures because what we just read there, death is swaddled up in victory. Yeah. Amen. Jesus tasted death for every man. Amen. Though... There is a sting of death. We will die, yet there is victory over the grave. Mm -hmm. Amen. We will be ushered into the presence of God, the Father, and Jesus Christ, His Son. Our appointment with death is inevitable. It records that truth. The appointment is reserved, but in Christ, the last Adam, mm -hmm. we have been quickened by His Spirit. So Amen. If we're alive unto God, if we're in Christ, and Christ is in, is in us, we have eternal life now, right now. John 5, 24, this was read earlier. Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life 
and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from mm -hmm. death mm -hmm. unto life. Amen. From death unto yeah. life. Herein lies the second appointment of God concerning men or mm -hmm. mankind. There awaits the judgment of God. It is the decree of God. Death is not the final end. Mm -hmm. Amen. Our text tells us that. It says that. It says, but, right? But this, um, uh, this new life, this, this judgment, we're, we're in Christ, eternal life is ours, however, judgment still awaits us. It awaits all mankind, all mankind. It's a sober truth. Most people today will sort of think of this concept of death or this life, this mortal life, and they'll make the phrase, it'll be all over then, hmm. right? They just think for now, this, yeah, this uh -huh. fleeting moment that they're living in. They just think, once this life is over, it's over. Hmm. Reincarnation, the various religions out there, you, you, you just know what they are. They have the wrong concept of what death is about. That's right. And there are some that shake their fist at God, and they laugh, and they'll be laughed to scorn, but they laugh, and they speak of hell as, as some place that is so far off the truth, it's, it's ridiculous as far as their concept of hell. Uh -huh. But there are some that even look forward to that and sort of say that, you know, they're in a, they're, they're a bit, uh, they're, they're opportunities, if you will, to sin or to be among sinners and to do whatever uh, they will, that in hell, that they'll be uh, comfortable in that location. Uh -huh. Not true. We know the truth. That's right. That judgment is coming, brethren. Amen. Amen. Judgment is coming. Amen. He says, but after this, the judgment, mm -hmm. or we can say in the sense of but, however, mm -hmm. the judgment is coming. Sad it is to say that the unsuspecting world is blinded by this reality that they will be judged. Amen. When mm -hmm. Paul wrote to the Romans concerning their error in man's judgment, that's what Paul was dealing with there, he asked this question, thinkest thou... Hmm. Thinkest that thou shalt escape the judgment of God? Do you really think that you're going to escape the judgment of God? Almighty God, that you will escape by the actions that you uh, currently uh, display here on this earth and in your judgment, you think you're going to escape the judgment of God, which is obviously the highest form of judgment uh, beyond man's judgment. It's an appointment of God and there's no escaping this for mm -hmm. anyone. For anyone. Yeah. He said, Amen. he asked that question, thinkest that thou shalt escape the judgment of God? The answer is no. No mm -hmm. one will escape the judgment That's of right. God. And to make this point clear, Psalm 96, 13 says, uh, The Lord, for he cometh, for he cometh to judge the earth. Mm -hmm. He shall judge the world with righteousness and the people with his truth. Amen. 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 Yeah. He's a God of justice, mm -hmm. a God of righteousness. A God of holiness, none shall escape that appointment. Amen. Amen. Romans 14.10, it says, makes, uh, it makes this declaration, for we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Mm -hmm. Amen. We shall all, all mankind, once again. Amen. John 5.22 says, for the Father judgeth no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son. Mm -hmm. Unto the Son. Mm -hmm. As Brother Dick again pointed out, just... Moments, moments ago, this, this judgment has been given to Christ. Amen. Why? Because he's one of us, brethren. Mm -hmm. Amen. He's gone through this life just as we have gone through this life in every form and, and beyond, right? Yeah. He was tempted in all points, such as we, yet without sin. Mm -hmm. Every aspect of this mortal life, Jesus had the preeminence over. Yeah. He Amen. was affected in every way yet without sin. Mm -hmm. Rightly so, he should be the judge. Yeah. The Amen. Rightly Amen. So. Amen. He Amen. created the heavens and the, and the earth. Right? Amen. He created all the universe. By his word, he spoke it into being. Well, mm -hmm. it's right that he should be the judge. That's Amen. right. And Amen. the judge of all mankind. Amen. Amen. Ecclesiastes 3.17 says, I said in mine heart, God shall judge the righteous and the wicked, for there is a time there for every purpose and for every work. Uh -huh. Every work. Some comments were made earlier, and we'll touch on that here again in a second. 
but every work will be judged. Mm -hmm. Even every idle word will yes. be judged and be uh, brought to pass. Ecclesiastes 12, verse 14. God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yep. That, that's something to reverence. The fact that we will be there, brethren, mm -hmm. and these things will be judged in that manner by that great judge of all the earth, Jesus Christ, we being brought before that Bema seat, that judgment seat, well, we have to reverence that now. This is the opportunity to reverence that, that day when it comes yes. to pass. Uh, let's see, let's turn over to, or at least I will. <laughs> you don't have to. If you, King James Version is what I'm using. Um, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, and we read this text here, beginning with verse uh, 12. Now, if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, <coughs> hay, stubble, mm -hmm. those are all worthless, right? Yeah, They're yeah. all worthless. Every man's work shall be made manifest for the day, and he's mm -hmm. referring here to the judgment day, uh -huh. for the day shall declare it, yeah. because yeah. it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. Amen. If any man's work abide which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. Uh -huh. And if any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss. Mm -hmm. But he himself shall be saved. Amen. So is by fire. Isn't that yes. great to know? Amen. Amen. Whatever work that really won't stand up to the fiery judgment of God, mm -hmm. well, it will be burned up. Mm -hmm. But brethren, we're going to be saved, though. Amen. Amen. So every idle word, every judgment that we regret and repent of now, brethren, in that day, in that day, we will still be saved. See? Mm -hmm. We'll still be, I mean, for Christ and for God to say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. And we look back at our lives, I'm going to speak for myself, and I regret <coughs> some of the things I did when I was a foolish young man before coming to Christ. I repent of that. And, I, and, and I'm ashamed of that, mm -hmm. but I'll tell you what, in that day, whether that's brought up or not, God is still just yeah. to do uh -huh. something. Yeah. He is still just. Mm -hmm. But we need to reverence that, that day when that uh, hour comes. And again, uh, let me turn to this. <clears throat> this judgment that's laid up or reserved for us, it appears as has been brought up recently, uh -huh. it appears to be the same day of our Lord's return, yep. Amen. the second coming. That uh -huh. we yes. speak of. It is the day. That's the right. The day of judgment. Amen. It uh, also has reference to that great and notable day uh -huh. of Amen. the Lord. Amen. See, Amen. It's a day. I like uh, one of the brethren. So many brethren have spoken so many <laughs> good words, but one of the brethren that talked about that day. It's mm -hmm. going to be a long day. Oh, brother. Day. Yeah. Yeah. A long day. Well, <laughs> it's. It's an eternal day, I think. Yeah, um, it's yeah. a long day, right? <laughs> that day, the day of His appearing, our Lord's return, those who love His appearing, by the way, and if we love His appearing, are we going to fear Him? Are we going to fear that judgment day? Brethren, I think not. We love His appearing. Amen. We look forward to it. See? Amen. That's, that's, you got to link those two things together. Right. This judgment mm -hmm. day, which is appointed by God, it is the self-same day. It is the day of judgment and the day in which the Lord will return for His bride, for His own. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In uh, 2 Timothy, again, some verses that I just can't go without. Sorry, just take a second here. 2 Timothy uh, chapter 4. This is the Apostle Paul. Listen to this language of how he states this. <clears throat> I, uh, verse 1, I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. At his mm -hmm. appearing and his kingdom. Amen. And his kingdom. See, yeah. his kingdom is going to be ushered in. He's the great king, but he's also the great judge. Amen. And oftentimes in days of old, we know the concept of kings. They were not only kings, but they were judges. They said, off with your head, if they didn't care for the one sitting in the court or sitting mm -hmm. in the court. 
they were both king and judges. Mm -hmm. Well, Christ Jesus, our Lord, our Savior, our Redeemer, the Lamb of God which took away the sin of the world, and my sin, who loved me and gave himself for me, he will judge the quick and the dead at his appearing. Amen. And then verse, skip down to uh, <coughs> verse 6. The Apostle Paul says this, For I am now ready to be offered. At the time of my end, the time of my departure is at hand. Mm -hmm. I, have fit, I have fought a good fight. Mm -hmm. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Yes. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. Mm -hmm. Brethren, it is that day. The day of his appearing is the day of judgment. We're going to be in the presence of our Savior, Jesus Christ, and He is the righteous judge. He uh -huh. will judge all things right. But I love the language that, uh, that's used here. Henceforth there is laid up. That Amen. word laid up, it's one of the very only words here in the New Testament that in the Greek it's the same word as appointed. Mm -hmm. Isn't that interesting? Mm -hmm. Appointed. It's, it's appointed. See, it's appointed for us that we will receive a crown of righteousness which the Lord, the righteous, uh, righteous judge, shall give me at that day. Amen. So that sort of softens any trepidations, any mm -hmm. fears that we may have of that judgment day. We're looking forward to it, really, brethren. Amen. This Amen. crown of righteousness is ours if uh -huh. we are faithful unto the end, if we are faithful when we die, when uh -huh. we see death. Amen. Another text here in uh, Jude. Boy, these are powerful words. I remember reading this, I think, for one of the very first times. It really hit me, and I said, my goodness, is this me? Is this my nature? Am I one of these? You can see what I'm saying here in a second. In Jude, uh, let's just begin with um, in this, uh, verse 4. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. I just love that phrase. They were, uh, before of old, ordained to this condemnation. Ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. He says, I will therefore put you in remembrance, though you once knew this, how that the, that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not. Mm -hmm. And the angels, which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness uh -huh. unto the judgment of the great day. Amen. 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 See, that's an appointment. The appointment... Mm -hmm of God's judgment to the universe, really. The angels are included here. Not only the evil, not only the wicked, and certainly not only the saints, but also here the angels who left their own habitation. He hath reserved in everlasting chains under, under darkness unto the judgment of the mm -hmm. great day. <clears throat> and then verse 14. And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with 10,000 of his saints yes. to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed mm -hmm. and of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you, that that. That is a sobering truth. Yes. People need to repent now. Now yeah. is the day of salvation. <laughs> you know, for people that hear the gospel and reject it or scoff at it or question God, I'll tell you, in that day, they're going to be ungodly. Ungodly deeds, ungodly, uh, that they ungodly committed, and their hard speeches. Mm -hmm. God's going to execute judgment on them. He says, execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly. That word convince means convict. Uh -huh. He's going yeah. to convict them. That's right. For what they've said and for what they've done. Mm -hmm. That's what Jude records right there. Well, we have many, many other scriptures to deal with on this subject, but I'm going to pick out a few. 
Again, I've made reference to the fact that the great day, uh -huh. the great and notable day, the day, the day of the Lord's uh, second coming, the day of judgment, uh -huh. all these are one and the same. Mm -hmm. uh, the kingdom of heaven, back in Matthew 25, our Lord was speaking there, and he likened the kingdom of heaven uh, like unto a bridegroom that tarried, he tarried, uh -huh. and yet returned. See, he tarried, uh -huh. the Lord's gone, he's up he's at the right hand of God. He's tearing, right? Mm -hmm. He's tearing now. We say, Lord, come quickly, right? Uh -huh. Lord Jesus. Uh -huh. But he's going to return. Mm -hmm. And later Amen. on, the ruler who returned asking his servants to give account of their talents. See, there was a ruler, right? He had his goods and so on. Well, he came back. He returned. And he asked his servants to give account of their talents. In verse Amen. 31, it says, When the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory, and before him shall be gathered all nations. Amen. And yeah. he shall separate them from one from another, as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats. That sounds like judgment to me. Yes. Amen. The all-seeing God, the all-seeing Christ, right, who knows all and can read the hearts of men, He's able to judge that situation. Uh -huh. He's able Amen. to sever the wicked from the uh, the, uh, the wicked from the, the sheep or the sheep from the goats. Uh -huh. Verse forty six. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, uh -huh. but the righteous into life eternal. Mm -hmm. Judgment is sure. It is set. It is awaiting Amen. mankind. Mm -hmm. The shalls. Just note that. I've often uh, heard my brethren over the years make reference to a lot of statements, and one of them is that term shall. When you see that shall, uh -huh. right, it's a sure thing. That's Amen. Right. It's destined to happen. Amen. Amen. When the Lord Jesus makes reference to shall, <laughs> yeah. you better believe it's going to happen. Amen. It is sure. It is in His purpose. It's of necessity. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it's certain. Um, it's appointed. Justice will ultimately prevail in that day, that divine appointed day. It will come to pass. Matthew 12, 36 and 37, every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give an account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Another text to consider is Romans. Romans chapter 2. And uh, beginning with verse 5 here, this is uh, the Apostle Paul. He says, But after, verse 5, But after thy hardness and impenitent heart treasureth up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God, who will render to every man according to his deeds, to them who by patient continuance in well-doing seek for glory and honor and immortality, eternal life. Mm -hmm. But unto them that are contentious and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation and wrath, tribulation and anguish, upon every soul of man that doeth evil, of the Jew first, and also of the Gentile. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Boy, God is no respecter of persons. Yeah. He Amen. will judge rightly, regardless Amen. Of, the, of the nature or character of an individual. You're either righteous and holy, and your faith is found in Christ Jesus, right? Either that's the, the case, or God will judge the ungodly mm. and they will go into eternal damnation. It's just the way it's going to be. That's how God said it and he will bring it to pass. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Only mm -hmm. Christ can read the hearts of men. Amen. Yeah. <clears throat> Amen. And I'd like to turn to Romans 14. The next text here. Romans 14, a couple of verses here, just a couple. He says, but why? Uh, chapter 14 and verse uh, 
10. But why dost thou judge thy brother? Or why dost thou set at naught thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. For it is written, As I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to mm -hmm. me, and every tongue shall confess to God. Mm -hmm. So then, every one of us shall give an account of himself to God. Amen. And that brings this truth to a very sobering situation that we will all be accountable for what we say and what we do. Mm -hmm. Amen. Whether our deeds were evil or good, mm -hmm. they will be burned up, brethren, the things that are wood, hay, and stubble, but the things that will last, and of course by faith, these things will cause us, if you will, to endure that day. Yes. We will be in the very presence of God. Now, just going back to our text, I did want to just touch one more time on the text itself, because I love how he makes reference here to loving his appearing. So he says, and as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment, so Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear uh -huh. a second time without sin unto salvation. Amen. I'll tell you, there's a lot of things to consider about that judgment day. But one thing that I look forward to, and again, many of my brethren touched on this already, but uh, I look forward to this, brethren. Jesus will be vindicated. Amen. Yeah. Uh -huh. See, the first time he was here, he came in the form of sinful flesh. Mm. He looked like any other Jewish man. Mm -hmm. See, he was the Word made flesh. And as he went about with his disciples, and as he was out there in Galilee performing miracles and doing the will of God and the work of God and his Heavenly Father, they saw him as a man. I'm mm -hmm. talking about those with the unseen mm -hmm. spiritual eye. Uh, they didn't see him as the Son of God and the mm -hmm. Son of Man in that regard. But um, he died. Mm -hmm. He died on the cross. He died as a criminal. Mm -hmm. He died like any other criminal, seemingly a sinful man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, we know that he died because all our sin was laid on him. Yes, amen. Right? He took our sins away mm -hmm. when he died on the cross and he was buried mm -hmm. and he rose again, justifying us, by the way, mm -hmm. when he rose from the grave. I'll tell you, when you think about that, the world, the then known world, and even today, in today's concept of religion, or Christ Jesus, or heaven itself, this whole economy of the Christian faith, people have a wrong judgment of what has come to pass in the life of Christ and in the faith of Christians and what we truly believe. Amen. They have the wrong, wrong understanding. And I'll tell you, when they just look back 2,000 years and see Christ Jesus, a great man, a great prophet, a Jew, mm -hmm. that's all they see. Mm -hmm. They see him as a mortal man, flesh and blood. Mm -hmm. And that he may be a, been a sinner. That's why he was crucified. Mm -hmm. But brethren, we know better. Yes. Amen. He had no sin of his own. Mm -hmm. uh, he Amen. died for our sins. Amen. Amen. He was raised from the grave. He was declared to be the Son of God with power in mm -hmm. the resurrection of the dead. I'll tell you, Jesus will be vindicated yes. in that judgment day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The first time he came, that's how he was viewed. However, the second time he comes, he will appear, and what does it say? He shall appear the second time without sin unto salvation. He never had sin, but he took our sin upon yeah. himself. Uh -huh. yeah. That's what the writer's telling us here. Mm -hmm. He's going to appear the second time without sin unto salvation. Brethren, our sins are under the blood of Christ. Amen. And therefore, we will be saved to the uttermost. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. that's, that's the condition. That's the situation we look forward to. He will return, and He will return in all His glory. This also is the appointed day, the appointed day of the judgment seat of Christ, and we look forward to it. We await that day. Mm -hmm. Jesus will be vindicated in the eyes of the whole assembled universe, all mankind, all the holy angels, every creature, every host of heaven 
will glorify the Lord in that day. Our Amen. salvation Amen. will be complete. We will be ushered into the very presence of God. Amen. 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 Amen.